Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. I am a safe driver. And like any safe driver, I want to save money for that. The more safely you drive, the less you'll pay. Who doesn't want to pay a rate based on your own safe driving? You're in good hands with Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for rating and your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Cheers. Welcome to the Handsome Pod. It's your friend Fortune Feimster. I'm May Martin. I'm Tig Notaro. And, and we are We're handsome. <laughs> we are handsome. And happy. Everybody looks lovely today. Mm, oh, thank, thank you. you. We are all glowing actually with a sprightly energy. I've got on my headset. Can I take your order? <laughs> or I'll have a uh, Big Mac and uh, make it bigger. <laughs> That's okay, right. I'll actually take the uh, Old Navy jeans. You got it. Can mm-hmm. I get a pair of Old Navy jeans to the front? <laughs> Thank you, because we only have one pair. You got to fly them mm-hmm. in. No, I know. I feel like we're all still kind of basking in the glow of, and this might come out like later, but mm-hmm. we recently did our live show at Dynasty yeah. Typewriter. Yeah, it was so fun. Here's my question for you, May. I love a question. Yeah, and I need the absolute truth. Okay. Did you go to the bar after? <laughs> after the you did show? No, I didn't. But oh. now it looks like I'm lying. It looks like I went <laughs> and tried to pick up a bunch of uh, <laughs> listeners. No, everybody did. Like some of the singles went out. Like I saw people posting pictures. They went out to the bar to the uh, wow. near Dynasty Typewriter, and mm-hmm. it was really tempting to swing by. Not to not in a creepy way, but just to uh-huh. say hi. And you um, wanted other people to have love connections. You wanted to check on that Mm -hmm. exactly now what is the bar we might as well mention it it could be the handsome singles bar it's so great there it's called the prince and it's like korean food and a kind of red decor (laughs) am i making it sound sexy oh wait uh, i think i know this place yeah what made you realize it red decor red decor korean food cool bar Mm -hmm. yeah i just knew it I've Stephanie knew it too. She was like, "Oh, that's a really cute bar." So, I don't yeah. brag, but I'm pretty sure that was the bar I went to with. <laughs> it's weird to say this, but uh, I guess it was my mom, mom. Charlize <laughs> Theron. Okay, oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> you didn't know Fortune ago. dated? I did. Charlize <laughs> Theron. Wish. Oh no, my Jack, god, Jackson, they were together. They were together, and they had a bit of a nasty fallout, but you guys <laughs> have come back together as friends, and it's been no, nice to see that. This was years ago. I went to the HRC dinner with Chelsea and Charlize. Um, wow, I, I'm trying to picture her in that environment, because it's kind of a grungy place, and she's so glam, but maybe she's... Maybe it's super have you not seen place. Monster? Maybe oh yeah. She 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 showed up looking monster that night, right? She, oh, right. she was gorgeous. She was in all the prosthetics. It was Look. it was early on. It was early on in my I had just gotten on Chelsea and I got into the car and she was there and I was like, what's going on? Were you were you starstruck? Uh yeah. Do you have struck. the hots for her? Who doesn't? She's gorgeous. Yeah. Even Jax has the hot score. Wow. Um, I, we were at a hotel in um, Ojai. Mm. And the Ojai Inn. Love it. And Charlize and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and her kids were in the room next to us. Wow. Fun. I'm picturing you with a little glass up to the wall, just listening with your listening ear Listening to pressed. her be hot. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I also saw her at a sushi restaurant once. I don't know if we want to keep. Oh my god! <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. Sort of a sighting. I feel like this is a new. This is a new segment. Oh, one Everyone time, comment where you've seen Charlie. <laughs> one time, I went to breakfast in Los Angeles, and this this was probably like twenty five or more years ago, but it was a little tiny um, breakfast place, and um, what's her name? came in she was Mm. (laughs) this is where the story falls apart (laughs) (laughs) what is that 
that person's name. Uh, Someone came she in. was she was married to Kenny Chesney. Oh, oh um, uh, Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger. Okay, so Renee yeah. Zellweger comes in. I like She's to having... refer to her as Cold Mountain. Mm. Why? <laughs> great, great movie. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> no, she seems lovely. Um, so she's in this little tiny breakfast place, and everyone in the breakfast place is so aware that she's there, and everyone's yeah. staring at her. And then, leave it to Hollywood... Julia Roberts walks in. Shut up. And has breakfast there. And so you see everybody <laughs> oh not God. sure who to look at. Like it's such, oh it's my such God. a tiny little restaurant. That would trip me up. I think if I was in that breakfast spot, I'd think I was in the Truman Show or like Candid mm-hmm. Camera. Like mm-hmm. that's too, they're too famous, those two, to be in the same place coincidentally at the same time. Everyone's head was exploding yeah. because it was maybe 10 tables. Yeah, and then yeah. you see them. I don't know if they knew each other or if it was just the "Hey, famous! Hey, I'm famous right. too." Hey, not what up, famous. <laughs> hey, famous. Hey, yeah. famous. Yeah. Like, hey, cold hey. mountain. She's like, hey, hey runaway mountain. bride. <laughs> hey, runaway bride. <laughs> hey, pretty woman. Hey, pretty woman. <laughs> hey, Chicago. <laughs> hey, pretty little I'm a, lady. I'm a big rom com gal, so that would have been, you know, Bridget Jones' Diary. Yeah, that would have been a big deal for you. So, who yeah. would you have stared at more? I mm. equal, I would have given them equal attention. If Meg Ryan had then also walked in, my head would have exploded. <laughs> yeah. Love a rom-com. I'm trying to get them to bring them back. Okay, but... Wait, they never went away, Fortune. What, who's them? They I'm trying away, to get kind I'm tr- of. I'm trying to get them to bring them back. Tig was just in one with Ashton Kutcher and uh, Reese Witherspoon. Oh, yeah. Reese. They're back. Yeah. They're back. They're back. <laughs> Full force. I brought them. Me, Reese, and Ashton brought them back. Oh, yeah. They're back. <laughs> <laughs> we totally forgot. They're, they're really popular again. They're popular again. Thanks, Reese. <laughs> Well, uh, then me. Yeah. I was like the other, oh, like I was doing some heavy lift. <laughs> you held that coffee cup so good outside mm-hmm. that school. Yeah. I guess, I mean, they don't make them as often. They used to be like all the time. All the big stars did them all the time. Yeah, well, like, they are now since me and Reese and Ashton brought them back. <laughs> the triangle of rom-coms brought but them back. But really, who, who would, I don't care if you love all of those people equally. Who would yeah. you, if, if somebody was like, you have to choose one celebrity to stare at the whole breakfast, who are you going to choose? Out of or, Julia and and Renee, just the two of them. Uh huh. Probably Julia, just because like I just grew up watching her in like every movie known to man. She's, I mean, Renee's amazing too, but it's real a real Sophie's choice. But Julia's just been in so many mo- iconic movies from my childhood. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do an impersonation on. You're not going to believe this. This seems so incongruous to. I like, bet I will. My. <laughs> <laughs> my like style of comedy but i used to part of my set used to be a julia roberts impersonation oh <laughs> I, it. come on no, babe. It, yeah it, it, no, well, i regret it bringing it up but it's just like a moment of i feel like she's always getting startled by something and then exploding into hysterical laughter yeah as a result and i used to Let's really go see for it, it. Uh, well yeah. uh, it's 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 very on me because it's very loud and hysterical and high-pitched Okay. Well, that's why we want to see it. <laughs> oh, God. Do you want uh, me to start with one and then you do one? Or do you want to oh, start with Oh, yeah. One? Oh, I want to see yours. Okay. You got a Julia Roberts impersonation? I'm going to try. Okay, so on... it's being startled by something, screaming, mm-hmm. and then d- okay. exploding into hysterical laughter. <laughs> well, okay, this is the scene where she's grabbing the necklace and Richard Gere slams the box. That's okay. exactly it, right? I have a great idea. Okay. And then what? after Fortune does this, yeah. then you be surprised by Fortune's impersonation. Yes, yes. Burst into laughter and okay. whatever she Wait, does. But then, Tig, you got to do the final one. Okay, okay I'll do it. I'm going to do the giggle. I'm going to do the like, kind of startled giggle. Mm-hmm. You do. You go to the next level with it. How about okay. that? Okay. All right. Ready? But all right. And then I go to the next level? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> I'm right. scared. I'm nervous. So everybody just pretend. Ten. I'm Julia Roberts. Our lives depend on this. <laughs> yes. I'm reaching for a necklace as we speak. <laughs> That's the- wow. 
Guys, oh, I'm God. still doing mine. I'm still oh, sorry. It's I'm still petering oh, out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh. that there's a future for May and I in rom coms, not just you, Tig. I think so too. That was. I don't I, know. I, I have the. <laughs> I, I have it know. cornered. I have it cornered. <laughs> I, that yeah. gave me um, gender dysphoria, screaming like that, like a da- <laughs> like a damsel in distress. I've, I feel like I've. Funny though. I feel like it was really unleashing like a secret aspect of myself that I try to I try to suppress. Like even when yeah. I'm on a roller coaster, I notice I I'm like, <laughs> and really? I probably <laughs> yes. And if I probably if I let myself really go for it, I would be screaming like a schoolgirl, you know. But but that's the actor in you. You were acting. Yes, I suppose. Yeah. It kind of brings us back to that conversation about um, heartthrob hot men in Hollywood yeah. crushes. Yeah. Where it's a little confusing. Mm-hmm. Where why? Because you're like, do I want? Well, it's to not be... confusing for you, May, because you're like, whatever. I'll take it. You know. <laughs> If you're a human, <laughs> um, bye. But, yeah, <laughs> he says it's, take it's called bye. <laughs> you know, I, thought it a, was even, I thought you were even more than bye. Uh, yeah, I guess if you could be more than bye, I guess I'm not. But yeah, pan, that's what I'm saying. Is like, uh, but if you're alive, it was like LGBT and then W for whatever. I'll take it. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that's, that should be a thing. Um, <laughs> whatever I'll take it yeah but it's confusing I think for me and Fortune when we're giddy about dudes I mean, about dudes yeah where you're like yeah. oh this isn't why am I smiling so much what do I mm-hmm. what do I need from this man that I actually don't want <laughs> what do I need from this man that I actually don't want that sounds like um something you say in therapy and then the therapist mm-hmm. repeats it back to you and you're yeah. like huh <laughs> need to what do you need my therapist has a headset on from old navy <laughs> yeah my yeah, my I therapist welcome. has two I jobs to therapy i oh. will be your therapist today take a seat tig no you're the therapist but you're also um fielding old navy merch Oh, calls okay. from like the from storage or whatever so it's, it's called so it's like this it's like oh i get it that is hard that must have been very traumatic mm-hmm. for you i'm sorry um yes can we please fly in those jeans thank you a uh, note i'm in. gonna need the um 32 by 28 yes thank you anyway how did that make <laughs> you feel <laughs> Okay, we're going to need the tank tops and flip-flops up to uh, <laughs> checkout tops, line number flip-flops. three. Go ahead. So w- and he, when did he pass away? When you were three? Okay. <laughs> I really like the idea of drive-through therapy, though. Like, I really like, uh, welcome mm-hmm. to therapy. How can I help you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're driving through. Uh, real quick, uh, I got a bad relationship with my uh, uncle. Uh, okay. Yeah. My ex used to make a joke about a drive-through confession booth. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Just a priest in there, and you pull up. You're like, "Hey, uh, rough night." <clears throat> God would not approve. Wait, you're you were you raised Catholic, Tig? I was. It, so did, but you, did you go to confession or not? I did. No I did. way. I did. Okay, I've I've always wondered. Like, does it act? Does it actually feel like a relief? Like you say the thing, and then you're like, "Great, let it go." Uh, no. I mean, I was pretty <laughs> young, and so my um confession was i wasn't really confessing much right you know you were just like i was i was like oh i talk in class oh so that's like almost reinforcing a shame that you don't need to have about... right, right, right right but i also i think i never went again because something came over me and i was like oh i don't believe in god so right. why would i go to confession and talk to yeah. this weird person in a little hut um <laughs> Did I tell you not about a how weird it person? I don't know if it was a weird, <laughs> weird person, <laughs> but um, a little nice hot. guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. I drive with two hands on the wheel. I'm checking my blind spots. I'm never on my phone. I should be paying less on my insurance. The more safely you drive, the less you'll pay. Who doesn't want to pay a rate based on your own safe driving? You're in good hands with Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for rating 
and your rate could increase with high risk driving. Everybody wants to look handsome, am I right? Just picture a handsome wardrobe upgrade with quality essentials, but at an unbeatable price. Quince has you covered with timeless pieces that never go out of style. You're gonna have them in your closet forever. And the best part is all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. So by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings onto us buyers. Yeah, Jackson and I have both rocked some Quince clothing and it's really cool. Jack's got the Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater. Uh, a beautiful forest green. Mm -hmm. So comfy and cozy and she looked awesome. Uh, I went on a trip and got some of those 100% European linen pants. Yes. I was looking real good. Let me tell you that. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash handsome for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash handsome to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash handsome. You know, my, my parents were real atheists. And so I think I, I tried to rebel when I was like seven by suddenly being like, I'm extremely Christian. And I oh, had really? a, uh, yeah. And <laughs> oh I had a, can, can you imagine if Max and Finn did that? Christian. <laughs> um, I believe in the glory of God. And so I had uh, a little calculator. And you know how you can mm. write like boobless on a yeah. calculator? Yeah, like, of course. You can write so, boobs, boobies. That's exactly. the, the highest level of math I ever made it to was boobless. <laughs> so I would like, I in my head, I would pretend that this calculator was my tool of communicating with Jesus. And uh, oh. I would, but wow. I could, but all I could say to him was like boobies and boobless. But I, I would just pretend that, and I'd be like, and my parents would be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, I'm talking to Jesus. Uh, he died for our sins. And they'd be like, I think, oh, maybe wow, you'll really grow out of this. It. I don't know. It was really weird because they it was not coming from them or really my school. I think I just I must have had some friends who were super religious. And You're like, I'm done with G-O-D. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> at, at our kids' school, they do this thing called passion projects. Uh -huh. And what it is is each kid shares what their passion is something they know so much about and are oh. obsessed with. And then the whole class learns about their obsession and passion for the whole week. That's what the oh, whole wow. week is about is, Whoa. is like rocks. You know, what the, wow. like if one kid is really into rocks and yeah. everybody learns everything about Max's passion. And yeah. so it's, it's a really great thing. And when, when that was coming up, Finn was like, Oh yeah, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to do sports. And so he was doing his whole passion project on sports and we were like, "Max, what are you going to do?" And he was like, "Uh, I'm not sure yet." And we were like, <laughs> "Okay." And then every morning we'd be driving to school and we'd be like, "Max, have you thought about your passion project? What do you want to do?" And he was like, "Yeah, I don't know." And so <laughs> one day <laughs> we're going and we just hear from the back seat <laughs> Max says, um, I think I figured out what my passion project is going to be. And we were like, okay, what is it? And he goes, uh, Jesus. And we, oh Stephanie God. almost drove off the road. <laughs> she was like, uh, what? <laughs> we didn't even know he knew who Jesus yeah. was. We were, and Stephanie was the opposite reaction than most parents. She was like, driving off the road looking into the back seat going what did you just say what oh, how did you God. how did you know about that who told you about jesus <laughs> and passion, so passion of the christ well that's yeah. what she said she was like oh my gosh this is passion of the christ and she was like max you don't know and what do you why would you want to talk about jesus like what do you do you even know and he was like um, no, but I'm just curious about Jesus. And so she was like, but this is for you to share something you're so passionate about. And we found out later that there was some, because of the connection with Santa and Christmas, oh. that's where his interest was, was oh, this guy had sense. something to do with presents and he wasn't... <laughs> And so once we got he was to the born, yeah, yeah, Christmas, yeah, Christmas Day, yeah. yes, yes. And so um, when we explained that and that 
you know, the whole point of it, again, is for something you're passionate about and you know so much about. So he did end up talking about rocks, but... Um, uh, <laughs> so he went with rocks <laughs> in the end? Jesus to rocks. Yeah. Stephanie oh was like, God. can you imagine, like, what people would think our life was? Yeah. And what our... If Max was talking yeah. about Jesus for an entire week. <laughs> I am passionate about um, charcuterie boards, in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> and ice cream and coffee. Yeah. I do yeah. love a charcuterie board, though. I'm really into them. Okay. So are you into, like, combining all the different flavors and, like, arranging it like a flower bouquet almost? like? I love it all. All the cheeses. Put it in my mouth. And also, I don't know. Do you guys ever have a hard time pronouncing the word charcuterie? charcuterie yeah. charcut well no we're doing no. pretty easy. charcuterie you guys yeah. are doing pretty good but you want me to give you a little trick in case yeah. you ever forget no like, that's okay because we don't have <laughs> trouble <laughs> i'm gonna tell our listeners yeah well you can't have charcuterie without cooter virgin <laughs> <laughs> oh my god virgin oh my god get it char Cooter. Cooter. Everyone Free. got oh, yeah. it, but everyone is stunned and so disappointed in you once again. May is mortified. Thomas yeah. is embarrassed. But you'll never forget how to say charcuterie. Nobody we had were... a problem with it. Everyone said it just fine. Oh my Some God. Some people have a really hard time with that word, but if you just remember, you can't have charcuterie without cooter. She Don't said it again. It. <laughs> I'm going to disconnect right now. Oh no, my God. don't leave me, my friends. <laughs> what, would, <laughs> what would your passion project be, Tig? My passion project. And you got a week to teach me and Fortune and Thomas about it. Mm, you know, I'm sorry to be boring, but plant-based food. Oh, God. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. you can't have... Them plant-based food without without cooters <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. well that one episode you revealed about you know you were going to be a plant-based coach a lot of people were really into that and said they would want that from you oh really where was that on instagram on our uh, inst- handsome instagram page okay well i have to go look they said tig i can't believe you're not doing the the coaching <laughs> they were like i would love to be coached by you and Plant-based well, nutrition. it's because my rom-com co-star Reese Witherspoon shamed me and uh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and made me realize <laughs> that I would make hundreds of dollars. Oh God, that really that made would, me. That's laugh. why I would be a passion project. Mm-hmm. But, that's uh, true. I love talking about uh, I love talking about plant-based food. Well, I, I'm planning to do mine on Napoleon. So Napoleon Dynamite or Napoleon the the guy yes. conquistador. <laughs> <laughs> conquistador. No, it was no. French. I know it was French. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what you would do, is Napoleon? I think so. Like anytime I've learned about him, it's so juicy and the details mm-hmm. are so weird and interesting and and. It, I'd like I'd have to brush up on it and learn about it in order to present stuff about him for the week. So that would mm-hmm. be and and I do feel pretty passionate about him because he's such a like conundrum. And the whole like Napoleon complex coming from him. Yeah, totally. And mm-hmm. I think because he did, I mean, he was like a terrible dictator, and like millions of people died as he tried to invade all Mayfact. of Europe. Mayfact. Yeah, <laughs> but he was also. You know, he had this other side to him where he... He, he had a heart of gold. I don't know about that, but he <laughs> implemented the, the Napoleonic Code, which was like a very progressive... He was anti-slavery. He was into chepar- separation of church and state. He was like he was like very progressive in some ways, but then also a total megalomaniac. And like he, he kidnapped the Pope and then Whoa. he made... and then What he, a he, day. I know. And he crowned himself emperor and... When the Pope, he made the Pope in Notre Dame, you know, put the crown on his head. And right before the Pope put it on, he took it out of the Pope's hand and put it on himself. He was like, only I can. Wow. Yeah. There's just juicy details like that. I don't know much about him except for when he was in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. He was great in that. That would be a whole day of the week I'd be talking about. (laughs) (laughs) That would be, that's a perfect way to do a passion project is go back in time and have him come. Oh my God! What's your passion project? 
fortune. I charcuterie. Felt charcuterie boards are, I'm pretty passionate <laughs> no. about those. You don't think that could fill a whole week? <laughs> <laughs> Day one, pickles. Well, Day you'd one. have to like branch off into subs, a sub, yeah, what am I, a sub? Like growing, growing some kind of, or, or some cooters. Of I would have to talk about cooters at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. That wouldn't be uncomfortable. Yeah, there'd be a day on cooters. I don't like, know that I wanna, you know, get out my Venn diagram. Six days on cooters and one day on a charcuterie bar board. Uh, eat stress free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready to eat, dare I say, handsome meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add ons every week, like breakfast, on the go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Factor is your solution for fast, premium meals without the need for cooking. And Factor is celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu for our lowest carbon footprint meals. Head to factormeals.com slash handsome50 and use code handsome50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code handsome50 at factormeals.com slash handsome50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. That makes me think about sixth grade sex education. They made us go the boys in one room and the girls in another room. Mm. And they tried to explain all that stuff to us. Why'd they separate everyone? Because, you know, they were showing boys how to put condoms on a banana. And <laughs> girls can't see that. Girls, <laughs> they're need talking to learn about that their too. cooters. I think that their thought was that the girls and boys would be embarrassed talking about that stuff in front of each other. Yeah, I guess mm. that that's probably true. And the days mm-hmm. were like, we haven't been invented yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we weren't separated back yeah. in the eighties. We were all in the same room. I had a health teacher. We called it health in Canada, yeah. and, and but she um she did this thing where she brought in a cigarette and she like in in the classroom opened the windows. We were all like scandalized and freaking out. And she took a long drag on it and then she blew it through like a Kleenex and you could see oh. like the some of the tar on the Kleenex and oh. but it really felt like. She just wanted, like, she wanted a cigarette. She just wanted She, she smoked yeah. almost the whole cigarette. <laughs> She's and trying to turn every weird everybody. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's chopping up drugs. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to show you what somebody on dr- on uh, cocaine is like. Yeah. So. Or we had, like, sex ed in, in rehab as well, and we were all super old. Uh, but the teacher was like, uh, can anyone draw an anatomically correct cooter <laughs> i've never said cannot. cooter before may uh, it's fun uh, let it fly may it is kind of fun uh, like it's an anatomically it's correct it's liberating we're taking that word back let it yeah. fly the flying cooters the go flying on flying cooters but i was uh, i was <laughs> such a, a like a cooter is a turtle yeah or a vagina can also be called a turtle <laughs> like both but uh, there is a uh turtles are cooters fortune <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't, let me Google. I don't know if it's How a do you, do you think turtles know that they are cooters? Yeah. Uh, turtles <laughs> This was about the level cooters? of knowledge in the This is the really room. good are, podcasting is, is when somebody's Googling. Yeah, are cooters, cooters turtles? The common cooter is a large <laughs> olive-colored turtle with yellow stripes running down the back of its head and neck. Ford, fortune fact. Fortune fact. <laughs> I've seen the. I've seen those little guys. Yeah, that's a cooter. Yeah, that's a cooter. You're and looking at cooters. And they call this the common cooter. The common cooter. <laughs> the common. Cooter. Well, we had to draw a diagram of the common cooter, and uh, I was so like arrogant, and I was like, uh, "Guys, I got this. Uh, yeah. Trust me." Like trying to show all the boys, I was like, uh, "Yeah, I've, been, I've seen a few. Let me tell you." And I, I got it all completely wrong. Really? Yeah, and I was like 17, 18, and I just was like... Truth be told, I don't know that I would do a good drawing. Yeah. 
I mean, so should we go to hear our guest question? <laughs> you don't. You don't want to talk about this <laughs> No, I just thought that would be a really funny transition into uh, our guest That's question. <laughs> Is that co- that cooter that uh, fortune can't draw a cooter? I can't. I can't draw no cooter. All right, today's question uh, is from Lena Waithe, who is an actor, producer, and screenwriter uh, who created the Showtime series The Shy, as well as the BET comedy series Boomerang and Twenties. Uh, she wrote and produced Queen and Slim and won an Emmy for her work on the hit Netflix series Master of None. Lena's so cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, Lena listens to our podcast. No way. Well, yeah. As she should. Why wouldn't and, she? And uh, Lena's the best and is killing it out there and just creating some really cool stuff and um, just a real tastemaker. So we're honored to have Lena ask us a question. And here it is. What's up, handsome? It's your girl, Lena Wave. And I'm so excited to be asking y'all a question. Huh. If you could change one thing about our world, what would it be? Ooh, oh my gosh. It's a, of course, it's a cool question from a cool person. I know. Mm-hmm. But, but it's hard to pick one thing. There's a lot of things that need some changing. I think it's perfect. I think our world is absolutely <laughs> perfect, and I wouldn't change a thing. <sighs> That's like my, my parents perfect. said that they have no New Year's resolutions because everything's perfect. <laughs> they they've said never, that? Yeah. They've never made any? <laughs> Maybe it was just this year, but yeah, I like that. I, I treat it like a, I treat New Year's resolutions like a wish list. I like this and this and this and this. <laughs> <laughs> and you you act like you have no control over it. Yeah. And who I are you asking for the things from? Um, the universe. Mm, yes. Isn't yes. that who I make a vision board every? I should oh, give right. you my um. I'll give you my little calculator, and you can ask Jesus. Jesus. On your vision board, is there like a? Is there a sprawling mansion and a, cor- a convertible Corvette and um... yeah, definitely a Corvette, <laughs> a hot pink like Barbie. <laughs> it's me and Jackson Biggie. Would you want to live in a sprawling mansion that's no. kind of like no. on its own? No, no, right? You want to be amongst it. You want neighbors. You want neighbors. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to be out in the like middle of nowhere in a giant house that I'm scared in all the time. Yeah, yeah I don't want a, a sprawling house. That's not. That's not for me. Yeah, you don't mm-hmm. want like a wing, a dusty wing that you never. No, think you're afraid to go in and and like our kid. We've talked about moving. We moved into the house that we're in for safety reasons. Um, for like stairs and the size of our backyard. And so we moved in here when Max and Finn were babies and we've talked about moving to another house or maybe one with a bigger yard or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Max and Finn are, they love their house so much. And I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast, but they, (laughs) they, they want, they picture themselves growing old together in this house (laughs) and and they talk about how they want kids together no yeah because they don't know how kids happen so they're like yeah they just want to be together and live in their childhood home with their kids and (laughs) get married (laughs) it's so so cute cute. they haven't talked about marriage yet luckily but um but yeah they um they just picture themselves here forever with children they love it well they clearly feel safe there yeah they're they're happy here i love how when kids don't don't really understand like we had this ceremony to to like a sort of sweet um mm-hmm. ceremony to to recognize the godmothers of this child who i live with and uh yeah. it, it was so cute and it was just basically saying like we're your godmothers and they all got like a necklace and but it was yeah. kind of there was like a ceremony aspect to it it was yeah. like there was a solemnity to it and we were like what do you want um in the ceremony what do you want to have and she was like I want them to kiss on the lips. And we were like, well, I don't know. They're just friends. And like, uh, they're both. Now. Kiss yeah. Now. And she was like, I no, I re-, she was like, no, I really want that. Like it was, and to her, maybe she's seen weddings and things. And she yeah. was like, that yeah, will yeah. seal, that will seal the deal. That'll like, make it probably, all. Probably yeah. saw one of those Julie Roberts movies. Mm. No, she probably saw, um, <laughs> your place or mine with me, Reese and Ashton. <laughs> True. 
Yeah. But we were like, well, you can ask them, but I don't think they're going to want, like, <laughs> just the two godmothers are not going to want to kiss. kiss on the lips. Like, that's great. <laughs> I know the one thing I would change about our world, like, we've, we've talked about, like, I mean, you know, the, the big heavy ones like global warming and stuff, but just from, right. like, a my own personal experience of the world, like, I feel a real time scarcity in my life mm-hmm. like I just always want time to do more things and or mm-hmm. to do yeah. nothing and uh so I don't know what how would I change the world to give myself more time it's like mm-hmm. like a bu- a big red button that I could press to freeze yeah. time or like yes yeah definitely that's... a big red button in fact I have one here <laughs> oh great great yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep there's more time do, what would now. What do if the time was frozen? Like, what what would you use that f- time for? It's just like every relationship I have in my life, like every friendship, I just don't feel like I get enough time to like. Mm-hmm. To, uh, so it's like every friend I could have a full week just mm-hmm. hanging out, playing mm-hmm. the guitar, swimming in the lake. Missing out on anything. Yeah, but I'm not missing out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd never have FOMO. You'd always be hanging out with whoever you want. Yeah. And do you have FOMO? All the time. All the time. Wow. I have FOMO for things that aren't happening, though. Like, just FOMO for, like, this vision that I have of, like, all of my friends living on a commune and re- <laughs> read- reading there. books. But I saw that... Um, <laughs> reading books. Some... Shh. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just truly... constantly. Shh. <laughs> sitting in Janice? silence. Janice? I would never have down? a friend called Janice. <laughs> Sorry to Just all kidding. the Janices. There's some Just kidding. Janice listening right now that's so sad. So sad. I'm joking. I would I would never have a friend not called Janice. There <laughs> we are. Welcome back, Janice. Welcome back to the fold. But Janice, I did see you're back, some like baby. quantum scientists have just figured out how to move. They were able to go a few steps backward and forward in time for an mm. atom. Like so yeah. if you could that is wild. I w- mm-hmm. Okay, basically, I'm saying I wish time was more malleable right. and more you could shift it and everything. Yeah, shift mm-hmm. it, slow it down, speed it up, mm-hmm. bounce around on it. Do you feel that way? I, who has the time? <laughs> what? <laughs> even do that when when i see the those pictures and videos that pop up like here's a memory and max and finn are toddling around and trying to say words you know i i never understood when i wasn't a parent when um you'd hear people say oh my little boy is growing up or my little baby is gone and and i'm like "Mm, who cares like yeah everybody gets older and i didn't understand why that Mm -hmm. mattered and now i am neck deep in those feelings stephanie and i send memories that pop up on our phones and we're like good god Uh, like it's so insane so that's where i wish time would stop not but they're also incredible you know inching up on eight years old but right. when you see those painfully adorable yeah uh, and you really ugh. see it I with know. kids like mm-hmm. because yeah. they grow so fast and there's so much change but it's weird to think that actually we're all going through that as well like you just notice it more with kids mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah. but grow we're significantly yeah yeah i have it with my listen i know it's not the same as kids but i have it with my dog biggie you know, <laughs> of course <laughs> He's on there. Any pet is on borrowed time, mm-hmm. and it kills me. Yeah, we so. all are on borrowed time. Well, yes, but you know, unfortunately, their life cycle is a mm-hmm. lot smaller. God, and, uh, biggie! I, I just like take those moments, like when he's when we're with him, just be like, just soak this in, mm-hmm. yeah. soak it, up, soak every minute. Same with uh, Kitty City over here. Yeah. What else would you try to fix about our world? Um, I've touched on it before, but for me, empathy would be the biggest thing. I wish you could like pump it out there to like everybody all over the world to just like have it be at the root of everything. You know, I feel like if there was more empathy instilled in people from like a young age that we wouldn't be having such violence and angriness and all that you know i have such an easier time empathizing 
with kids. Like I, I have so much more like grace and patience with kids than adults. So I wish we could like, if I, like, if I looked at you guys and I could see your baby so like if your faces were still babies, yeah. but you still had adult brains and adult bodies, but you had the faces of your baby selves. I kind of <laughs> still do. Even yeah. at almost 53, I'm like, I look brand you, new. You look too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my serious answer, but I would have uh, the a more like ridiculous one would be, I wish that um, you could eat whatever you want and not gain weight like the fattening food i wish it weren't like bad for you yeah Mm. because it tastes so good (laughs) (laughs) why don't the scientists get on that though because i bet you could like mimic the flavor profile and texture but make it out you know what i mean like yeah but like you're eating all of it's like full of nutrients it's like so good for you (laughs) yeah i wish i wish that and i know very healthy eaters like tig to you, vegetables and all that stuff tastes so yummy, wonderful. I wish my palate were a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> like well, you know, yours. when you when you come off of, you know, processed foods and you give yourself time to retrain your, your taste buds, mm-hmm. then they do. But yeah. all of that food is engineered to make you yeah. addicted to it. Mm, but so I was I was at an event last night and I looked like the biggest nerd in, in the green room where I was like shoveling there were two different salads there and I was like turning to everyone going, this salad is so good. Have you had this? And, I mean, uh, you know, I I certainly I also have my share of processed food. It's not like I never have Right. I, I have. I love chips. I love mm-hmm. cookies. I love all that stuff. Yeah. Oreos. But, um, they're vegan. Oreos are vegan. They are? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I would not yeah. guess that. So are Swedish fish and uh, oh. other nerds, really? things like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say, but, yeah. Parvati's daughter just revealed the other day that she every night has, in the, or no, in the morning has been before she wakes us up has been sneaking to the kitchen and getting one Oreo, but she like, conf- <laughs> she like confessed it. She was like, I, I ate an Oreo this morning and I climbed on a stool and I went into the cupboard and I got the Oreo <laughs> picturing her doing that by herself is so cute. And then I was like, how often do you do that? And she was like, every day. Every day, one a day. <laughs> well, she's, she's a blossoming vegan. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When I do reel it in and I'm being healthier and like especially cutting down on my sugar mm-hmm. uh, and then I eat like a like a banana smoothie, I'm like, this is so sweet. I can't mm-hmm. believe how sweet this is. Yeah, my, my taste buds definitely shift, but I do wish that uh, some of that junk food I ate was a little bit better for me. <laughs> if you if you went fully off of it for three weeks... Oh my it would God. it would shift. Yeah, for sure. Everything. I've done that. I mean, I've done the mm-hmm. whole thirty a couple times where I yeah. have I have mm-hmm. felt that shift. I want to do that with um just dopamine in general. You can do like dopamine detoxes where you mm-hmm. go in, you you don't go on your phone and you don't. But some of them like you don't even make eye contact with anyone or go in daylight for or like you stay in the sort of dark for days mm-hmm. and days because we're so overstimulated. And then when you when you leave, apparently you're able to access like joy a lot more easily because you don't, you're not oh. so desensitized to these dopamine yeah. spikes, you know. I did one of those, um, I don't know what it's called. Is it deprivation tanks? Sen- yeah, sensory deprivation tank. Yeah, the the flotation. Go, yeah, the flotation one where you go float in it and it's complete darkness. Mm. And uh, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. This is weird. And they just give you like a little thing to put your like head on and i'm like how am i gonna float uh and this like i started i started to do it and i'm like kind of flailing about like ah i can't do this <laughs> and then i finally just was like kind of gave into it and and started floating and then at first i was like this is stupid and then like <laughs> within like 10 minutes I, i'm like i'm in the womb this is oh the safest God. place I've ever been. I never want to leave here. It's <laughs> oh so peaceful. God. It was like really cool <laughs> after a while. I was going to do one of those. And then the place I was going to go to, my friend went there and got pink eye. <laughs> so, Wait, what? I didn't, I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> yeah, I guess like from the water, like they didn't change it enough. Or Ew, but... Oh, no. 
now I'm Listen, grossed out. I was, so this, you had strangers no, no. poop in your eye. Aww. This well, no, this was in Toronto, and well, I went in Toronto. You did? Are you are you kidding? <laughs> I swear to God, I was. You was went in pre- Toronto. I went to one in Toronto. It was a pre- <laughs> someone gave it to me as a present. Uh, well, that's okay, where she got here's pink some dye. poop in your eyes. I still, I'm gonna try it. I think you should. It's kind of cool. I was like, I'd go back to this. Take what would you change about the world? Again, I've gone into it. Um, I just feel like, <laughs> you know, climate change. I'm not a perfect person in that arena, but calling on all corporations because nothing, truly nothing matters yeah. if the planet is is not here or functioning. So politics and junk food all the important stuff uh doesn't matter could you go back to candlelight times like mm. mm-hmm. you know yes, what i mean because that would probably if, if the whole world had to go to candlelight times what at do you mean night, go back to it welcome to my life wait you're, are you you're in candlelight by candlelight <laughs> no. <laughs> no but like there's days where i turn to stephanie and i'm like god i just it comes over me where i just fantasize about just leaving this entire life and just gardening and hanging out with people in dirt piles and and she was like when did you ever do that (laughs) like it's not like you're getting back to turn into your roots yeah your roots Um, dirt piles just rolling around with people in dirt piles as long as you still do the handsome pod i'll do the handsome (laughs) pod but i do have (laughs) fantasies of like i feel like i could you know, garden and cook yeah. and be by candlelight. I definitely could not. I have moments of, of craving, <laughs> I but love then I've been on my phone. I think me and Fortune are similar. Like I like to be in literally um, a Dave and Buster's arcade with like ding, oh. ding, 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 ring, 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 ring. I don't need like, all I, that. I'm like a medium. I'm like right between the two of you. Okay, I'm yeah. out gardening and cooking. Uh, <laughs> beans and <laughs> broccoli. <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't want to be like alone in the in the dark. But I definitely need some stimulation for sure. You know, to go back to your point about compassion. You know, violence and all of that. I would love if that was gone. But that that's mm. that's very much a part of compassion. But also around compassion, I wanted to follow up and ask you. What is your compassion towards people that are not compassionate? That's that's like the best type of Christians, I think, are are mm-hmm. really good at that. Like that the, yeah. the the people who really embody like the message of Christ. Like I know we were talking about Christians before, but mm-hmm. that like yeah. turn the other cheek, like really forgiving people without any expectation of clemency from them, kind of, you know? Like when you see a parent that's whose child's been murdered, be like, I forgive mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. court like yeah i wish you the best i'm like oh my god that's like- are you that person though fortune are you capable uh, of that I don't sort know. of yeah it's so scary we're taught that like if you if you show weakness they could like get you again you know like so it's like can you show empathy with without showing weakness or mm-hmm. without opening yourself up to uh, to harm again you know right i don't know we did that forgiveness episode oh. that was uh, yeah. that's true the sarah paulson yeah i'll go back and listen to that do you have a frivolous one tig uh, one that's not as no um... <laughs> 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 less apocalyptic one no only that <laughs> no absolutely not i'm not here for frivolous stuff on handsome pod right. i'm here to say if the planet's gone it's all gone okay. but side note <laughs> Remove all violence, please. Right. I thought you're, that it was going to be the frivolous one and it was going to be remove all violins. And I was like, oh, 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 no. Get those violins <laughs> Remove out of here. all violins. <laughs> all violins must go. Well, I'll be eating my Doritos full of nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> Nutrient dense d- <laughs> Doritos. Straight Finally the on the market. <laughs> I'll be silently reading books with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> on the compound i'll be gardening uh and cooking you know broccoli and whatever in piles so. of dirt just around the mm-hmm. corner yeah it feels like this world's a lot better since we made these decisions what Definitely. a time to be alive <laughs> <laughs> should we hear what should we hear what lena has to say yeah, yeah. 
All right, I guess my answer would be no more war. I know that's like a very generic answer, but it's really what comes to mind. Um, yeah, classic. World peace, please. Uh, yeah, can't wait to hear what y'all say. Peace. World peace is big. World mm -hmm. peace. I feel like yep. I I was selfish in my answer, but maybe I was consciously trying to keep it <laughs> keep it light. But <laughs> world peace, yes. Yeah, Lena and I were on the same page. No violence, okay? And fortune's okay. over there. Like, uh, where are my Doritos? <laughs> but, I, but, <laughs> but I also don't think. <laughs> I don't think we gave enough credit to the babies for faces idea in terms of world peace. I think if everybody mm -hmm. had the heads of babies and mm -hmm. then we might Maybe. have world peace. Jarring. Well, and you're saying with large human bodies and yeah, just baby adult. face. Yeah. Like, I so don't you... know. <laughs> that <laughs> like might make people angry. <laughs> yeah. Why do you uh, look like a baby? But but they'd look like one too. So it would be like you have your adult body and your adult brain, but your face because you're not gonna slap a baby face. May makes a good point. We're not gonna slap a baby face. <laughs> Anyways. Should we ask the baby face? Is anyone has ever slapped him? Well, I bet baby face listens to this show. He probably does. He'll just let mm. us know. Oh, is okay, that's a rapper? I was going to say, May has a, a face yeah, right now that is baby face. and a producer. And a okay. Producer. I, I thought you were referring to Thomas. Like, oh, we could ask the baby face. Oh, <laughs> baby face Thomas. I oh find out my God. Face. <laughs> baby, Thomas has a mustache. That throws a wrench in a little bit of the baby face. Not That's really. True. I think somebody <laughs> just got a new nickname. <laughs> baby, baby face. face. <laughs> like, Sorry, are Thomas. Are you referring to the singer or Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> baby face. Dick, have you ever seen Thomas without a mustache? I have, yeah. Which one do you like better? I, I like the mustache. I'm a mustache fan. Yeah. I really like mustaches. It's a sophisticated stash. Yeah. On our group text thread, could you send a, a non-mustache picture of Thomas? Yes. Or in fact, I have a picture that I love of Thomas in the olden days of working uh, for us where he's got a baby bottle going into a newborn's mouth. And I think he might be <laughs> on the phone, too. And he's got no mustache. Um, oh, that's I want that so badly. That, that picture. Do you know what that sounds like? Hmm. It sounds like the start of a rom com. Oh, does it ever? Like I'll probably Mike, be like in a it. Michael, like a Michael Keaton rom com. Remember, he used to do a bunch of rom coms back before he was Batman. Really? Mm. Yeah, he was a he was a stand up comedian first. No. Yes, he started the com comedy store. I love knowing that, and I also don't want to see his stand-up because it would have been actually, what yeah never seen his stand-up so i don't it, know anything just about in it, case but. like because it would have been what late 70s early 80s or something i like i just don't want to ruin how much i love him and um <laughs> just in case it was like really offensive what if he starts like a, an arena tour his comeback <laughs> tour everybody would be like as what what is he coming back what is, what's happening they have remade beetlejuice it's mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah, I'm excited about that. We have we have a joke, me and Parvati, that if we had a threesome, it would be with Beetlejuice. I don't know where the joke came from, or Whoa. it's kind of a disgusting image, but him or, or just the Beetlejuice, uh, the or character. Beetlejuice. Does but, it matter? <laughs> it matters to me. <laughs> I'm okay. trying to picture this. Too. Yeah, you guys sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it the real Beetlejuice or uh... mine is Charlie's, but Charlie's from Monster. Uh, Charlie's from Monster. Uh, oh, what a podcast! What a, what podcast. a podcast! Always a pleasure, guys. Always um, a pleasure. I love talking to my handsome, my handsomes, my handsome, handsome little handsomes. ladies. <laughs> mm hmm. And don't forget to uh, go uh, get some uh, handsome merch. Uh, we have some awesome uh, shirts and sweatshirts and tumblers and stickers and all that good stuff at handsomepod.com. And make sure to subscribe. I can't express enough. It's how 
we stay doing what we're doing. It helps us with our numbers. It secures the show. So subscribe. Don't just download and listen. Click subscribe. Tell your friends. Share episodes that you love. Build the community. And keep uh, Handsome going, right? Helps with our self-worth, those numbers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Review. Make sure you review the show. Give us five stars. Yeah, and until then... Keep it it handsome. handsome. What a podcast!